Hi everybody, thanks for watching this Premiere on Script video. And you know, I was looking at the past three movies that I posted and they've all been pretty long. So I thought it'd be a good challenge for this time to try and do a video under five minutes, but still share with you guys some like great functionality within Premiere. So let's talk about the active sequence this time, which is just gonna be, you know, the sequence that we currently have open in our program panel. And what we're gonna do is we are going to work today on muting our video tracks and our audio tracks, along with dropping clips into the sequence. So if we start over here, I'm going to bind the active sequence to the variable active seek right here. And then I'm just gonna run two alerts, which going to alert us the number of tracks that we have on the video tracks and on the audio tracks. So if I run this, you'll see four, we have four video tracks there, and then three, three audio tracks. And you get to those by going activeseek.videotracks.numtracks. Again, if you want to dig deeper into this, I urge you to get this Property Explorer add-on that I talked about in a previous video. And if you want to look deeper into what you can do in the Active Sequence, just type in app.project.activesequence, click the method list, and you can see all the things and information you can do. Back to this. There's one way to tell if our track is muted, and this is applied to both audio tracks and video tracks. If you're going to disable a video track by clicking one of these eyeballs, it, that's going to be muting the track. I don't know if they built these for audio and then just transferred the functionality up to video, but that is the equivalent of a mute. So we can test and see if a track is muted by saying activeseek.videotracks1, which is going to be this second track because it's an array uh, of tracks. And we'll test for that. We're going to say video tracks one is muted. And it's going to come back and say true. That's saying true, yes, it is muted. So what do we want to do uh, to toggle that? Well, what we'll do is we'll make an if statement that if activeseek.video tracks one is muted, if that is equal to true, then we're going to run it again, but this time we're going to set mute to false, meaning that it will not be muted anymore. Else, activeseek.videotracks.setMute to true. So basically what this is saying is, uh, is it muted? No, then mute it. Is it muted? Yes, then don't mute it. So if we run this, we can just see it's going to unmute that. We run it again. It's going to mute that video track again and back and forth. It's just going to perform a toggle on that video track, which is fun to use if you need something like that. If we go down to the next example, we're going to do this, but this time we're going to do it for all the video tracks, just by making a for loop and that using the same code that we had above, we'll loop through the video tracks by going, you know, for loop, declare your a variable is equal to zero. As long as a is less than the activeseek.videotracks.numtracks, and then we'll run the same code. And what this is going to do, if we look at the video tracks down here, is just the exact same thing except toggle all of the tracks at once. So there's various applications for this, but let's talk also about the audio tracks. We've got to give the audio tracks some love. And I've just done the exact same code here that I showed you right here, except instead of activeseek.video tracks, I've replaced video with audio tracks. And this is going to do the exact same thing, but it's going to be applied to the mute areas. So if we see that, it's going to swap those. And there you go. That is how you enable and disable a track in your active sequence. Now I'm going to go and turn all those on because now we're going to talk about how to insert a clip into our active sequence which is really a whole lot easier than it seems, but we have some options when we're doing it. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to create a variable here and bind it to clip. It's going to be to the first item in the array in the project panel. So what that is, is it's going to be this clip item up here. And I know that for sure because that was the first thing that I imported and I've tested this. So I know that that is always going to be the clip. So in order to do this and put that, that clip in our timeline, what I'm going to do is activeseek.videotracks0 insert clip. And then the first argument I'm going to put in is the uh, clip variable that we've bound to 
this clip item up here, and then I'm gonna put zero. Zero is going to be the time code that I want to place this clip in at. So if we run this, I'm gonna run that, and it's just gonna drop that clip right there on the first video track. And I'm gonna mute this so that when I'm scrolling through, you guys don't have to hear that. So there you go, that's about as easy as it gets to just throwing clips into your active sequence. But there's this thing that happens when we lay more than one clip in at the same time. And if we run this, uh, you'll see it just looks like it laid in another clip, but really this is the original clip that we laid in. And we can change this up just so we can show you a difference. And we'll move this back to where it was originally. And if we run this again, you can see that that insert clip is inserting the clip at the zero time code and pushing the clip that was already there on the timeline. So sometimes that's not what you want to do. That You don't always want to just throw a clip in and then move everything around in your timeline. So what I do quite a bit, and, and I pulled this from the sample code that Adobe gave us on their GitHub page, is I will bind a variable to track. And then I'll look in that track and we'll ask it if that track has more items than zero and we'll isolate the last clip by going track.clips and then the clip number will be the track.clips.numitems minus one, which will return um, you know, the number of clips. So in this case, it would be two minus one, which would be array item number one, a little bit confusing, and bind that item number one to the last clip variable. Then if that is coming through all good, we can say insert clip, the clip that we had before at last clip right here, dot end dot seconds. And it's very important that you include that dot seconds at the end there or else it's gonna return the time in ticks, which are a big pain and you don't wanna deal with those. So if you see what we're gonna do here, we click that and it's going to insert a clip right down there. It also inserted a clip because I forgot to comment out uh, this stuff up here. So it inserted one at the beginning and then another one at the end. But if we wanna run this one more time just to show you, there you go. You'll see that it popped that one in right at the end there. So there's one way to do it. You can insert clips and that's pretty easy. But if you don't wanna insert clips and move things around, even by putting it at the, the end or the beginning or whatever you wanna do, what you can also do is use this overwrite clip. And so for this overwrite clip example, I'm going to play stuff on track two, which is gonna be ActiveSeek.VideoTracks1. And I'm gonna place it wherever this player position is. And in order to isolate that, what I'm gonna do is make a variable, call it now, and do ActiveSeek.GetPlayerPosition. And it'll return the time code in ticks of where this is. So we'll have to convert that into seconds when we lay the clip in there. And then we'll go down to this next line, which is track dot overwrite clip. So we're going to the track, we're doing overwrite clip, laying in the clip that we've isolated up here, which I need to uncomment that. And we're gonna put it in at now dot seconds. So when I click the run, it's gonna lay that clip in right where I wanted it. But because of overwrite clip, it's not gonna move things around. It's just gonna overwrite the, the clips that are already there. So if I run it again, you can see that. Just kind of lays it in there wherever we want it and overwrites anything on the track. So that is my attempt at a quick movie. I know that I probably went over five minutes, but thanks for watching. I hope this is a good intro into what we can do in the active sequence that we have open in our Premiere project through automation. In the coming movies, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about markers and placing markers. I'll talk to you about accessing these clips and their effects, how to change up the effects that are already applied to these clips. And so we're gonna start diving deeper into this in future movies. So this is a good little teaser for what's to come and thank you for watching.